Hello everybody, thanks for having me here. So this is some uh, joint works uh, together with, with the Bonn group working on a Maya dictionary and uh, we are the com part of the computer science uh, team trying to provide some methods to find Maya glyphs derived from 3D data. So this is a brief overview about the presentation. So what drives us usually are 3D scanned objects, often with some text embedded. So previous presentations have been also about uh, cuneiform uh, tablets and Bartosz is presenting in the parallel ses session about Aegean ceilings. For this presentation, it's also a bit different than the regular computer science talks that we can also apply some hermeneutics uh, at the end from our findings from these networks we can compute from extracted Maya glyphs. <coughs> so, uh, well, as maybe most of you know, the from Maya writing, this was very well uh, destroyed when, when the Spanish arrived, so everything kind of on paper is gone. Uh, because they burn a lot of things and the, the remainders of the Maya writing are mostly uh, chiseled into stone. So you have these, these nice steely and uh, uh, walls with inscriptions. So this is one example which has also been uh, 3D scanned by our group together with the, the Bonn group. So the, this is also a 3D scanning campaign behind it to gather all the, the fine details of these very nicely carved uh, writing systems. Uh, as with, uh, with photographs and 3D rendering with true to colors, the top one is, is also a 3D model. Uh, it's not very suitable for doing uh, recognition of, of characters. So we transform it with our software framework, with the tubing and a, present, a workshop about it, into a curvature res representation where uh, concave and convex parts are color coded in in uh, bright colors or dark colors, so this really tells you this grayscale image where is something flat, where some details are going on. Our test data set, uh, what the colleagues from Bonn have uh, in totally acquired a two-digit number of inscriptions worldwide. Uh, the ones for the presentation today are from, from Guatemala, which are also by intention a bit uh, far away in time and also in, in place. And we changed a little bit the color coding, so this, please remember there are like uh, signs extracted from a darker one and a brighter one, because this is important for the hermeneutics part towards the end. So what we start is doing uh, what you know from other uh, document processing areas, if you're dealing with uh, Hebrew or Chinese, you have these writing systems which nicely write in, in blocks, not like cuneiform tablet, there you can't uh, do this trick. So we use our curvature images before from the 3D model and find the, the regular raster from the, the Maya writing itself to get the single glyphs out of the, these inscription parts. Of course, there are some other uh, elements, like here is a person standing, which are also taken into account. This one we have to filter out. And also this is a bit more future work, Maya symbols also exist in, in person or animal shapes. So what we are doing currently are the more simpler glyphs, which are on the inscriptions, and this would also work on the uh, even more simplified one, which you find painted on, on pottery. So about a brief introduction, so it's always hard not having the colleagues from Bonn here, but there is someone in the audience I've seen before. Uh, Maya glyphs, they are uh, composed of, of several elements. So you have this squared block and usually you have to the left hand side or right hand side, top or bottom, so all four sides of this square you can attach another glyph which is a condensed or uh, shortened version of, of this bigger central element. So this is, uh, is the, the second task is to find the, the sub glyphs themselves. This is also one which is quite easy to detect for, for a computer scientist because it's a number. So Maya numbering also used a, a 10 base system. One dot is a one, a bar is a five, so this is a four. And if this, I think, I'm not sure if this is a calendar sign, so you can see kind of what day of the month it is. So to give you a brief idea. For the subglyph segmentation, we, uh, we go back to our curvature data, and of course, because it's very fine, it shows all, all the small uh, uh, details in this 3D model, because on previous work, we also have detected like fingerprints on cuneiform tablets, so we're getting actually a bit too much detail, and we want to break it down into subglyphs. 
So we uh, are labeling uh, finding connected components uh, for these areas uh, themselves by, by thresholding. Uh, using a, a double threshold because there are some some pixels or points in, in the images which are unclear of where to put them together. Therefore, we use a method which is called random walker segmentation, which has as input uh, here, like in color text, pixels which are already known to be part of a sub subglyph. Then uh, the black ones where you know these are in the carvings in between, so they are blacked out, marked out, and then there are maybe some pixels left which are undecided, and by finding a way from a, a text pixel, avoiding the black ones, going over the gray ones, we, we also sort of add these kind of missing pixels to the connected components. What then is uh, also important is uh, conflict resolution, not only for, for war zones, but also in computer science, uh, because we have, of course, uh, areas which are somehow connected visually by, by their shape, within a glyph. So glyphs within glyphs are added to the bigger ones because we know of this arrangement that there is something always on the sides and in the center itself. And we also choose uh, not, uh, we will try to split overlapping areas to, to put them in the, in the right uh, context. Uh, then the clustering starts by the uh, subglyph extent. So each subglyph is an image, so this could also be called clustering subglyph extents. Because if it's a, a kind of a widescreen or a, a, a landscape or portrait uh, type of glyph, this has uh, some meaning for the for the processing itself because it's more like a suffix or prefix or something like this. So instead of uh, merging all together, we start clustering by kind of their their bounding box into some uh, uh, classes using a k-means algorithm to start then comparing the, the subgrips themselves. There we use a method which is called histogram of oriented gradients. So in image processing, uh, you have an edge, which would be the, the uh, part between a very bright and very dark uh, part of the, the image itself. And we can look at the orientation of the, the edges within this image and do this blockwise. And then we get uh, like an orientation get an orientation histogram, how the edges align within the image. And if there is something similar, it is a coarser representation, we can say one glyph is similar to the other one. There's also something important to remember here. This is done in, in smaller blocks in the image. So the resolution for the classification here degrades a bit, which we also see what effect it will have for the, the final outcome. The clustering uh, for the, the subglyphs itself is also then done within these uh, bounding box classes themselves, but with one threshold. So although we have a relatively low number on, on, on uh, parameters for the classification process itself. But uh, towards the end, of course, we have to do some, some normalizations to start uh, connecting these glyphs. So connections are done to build uh, like a network of similar glyphs. We're saying, okay, we, uh, we first we sort out every glyph which is a standalone because there we can't discuss anything later. But if we have some uh, some uh, portrait uh, subglyphs, some small squared ones, we can start connecting glyphs by these by the subglyphs themselves. And we only con uh, um, count connections one because otherwise we get too much tension in the, the network afterwards. Talking about tension, uh, so the, what's uh, built up there is some sort of a force field. So we introduce uh, several forces. One would be the attraction along, along similarity. So if we have like uh, at least uh, one connection, we say, okay, these two, two glyphs, uh, they are uh, like forced together. Then we have a repulsion. Uh, if something gets too close, so glyphs also like to have their like privacy space so that they push uh, other glyphs away if they, they come a bit too nearby. Also important to, 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 to inspect the graph finally and uh, to make like a one big cluster, there's a weak attraction to everything itself. So this compares a bit to like galaxies, so the stars stay somehow in a roundish shape at the end of the day. So this, of course, there is uh, some uh, random effect because the initialization is, is random and then uh, if they could also do a video, then it wiggles together, forming this uh, subglyph sharing network. 
And uh, here is something important showing off. You see that most of the, uh, we put an emphasis on the, on the darker uh, colored glyphs. You see there are only rare connections between the dark and the bright glyphs because they are from different places and also from different uh, times themselves. Uh, but they connect very well by the numbers. So here you have a bar for a five. Here are two bars, so this would be a, a ten. And you see that the because the, the writing also changes over time and region, uh, the, the symbols from a similar uh, period, okay, yeah, uh, stay together. When we go into detail discussing this with, with Christian from Bonn, uh, of course, he said, well, computer si science methods always have a certain percentage not working very well. Uh, so we have sorted it. Uh, this one out. So this is the, the kind of worst example and the reason probably is because there are too much fine details going on for the histogram of gradient method. So this part we have to improve in the future because if there is a, some just small details, Hawk doesn't get it. <coughs> then we had these, uh, these type of uh, wrong connections which are, were tagged like close enough because they kind of represent what was like known in the 80s or 90s for for where glyphs have been wrongly put into the same clusters, also by humans. Uh, so this is something where we can say, okay, the, the, the human expert in the past have done mistakes here, so why shouldn't be the computer system allowed as well? <coughs> then uh, these ones are also uh, kind of these mixed up ones uh, with, with, uh, with uh, broken pa uh, parts, uh, which also can be confused by the human expert. And this was a starting point to discuss how to arrange the Maya glyphs um, because there's no like numbering or lettering system so we can use these measures because something is similar can be confused so you can put it in a Maya a dictionary online next to it others would nobody uh, does this mistake again then we have uh, coming to the, the good examples where for some reason our system only used like central parts of the element and even if there are prominent uh, ones they have been skipped and kind of targeted uh, tech not important for, for finding a similarity. Uh, we have to check into this one and we even could uh, show that if something has been here, have been three uh, two thirds have been broken off where we had a, a very nice match of a damaged subglyph. But we are not sure if this is robust enough uh, because if when our, our number of glyphs extend we here we have like a two thirds chance possibility to match something wrong. So Christian was very happy about him. I told him, be a bit cautious. Uh, it's a nice result, but uh, don't put too much pressure on it because we have uh, enough glyphs which, uh, where the connections are, are properly done. Uh, also, if there are some variations in, in, in size, so if you look at this one where you have like these uh, kind of circular structures, this also is, is heavily damaged. Here it looks like you have these dots twice, so all these things are, are done properly. So we have more than enough uh, serious examples for themselves. So this already uh, brings me to the end of the presentation. So what we showed here is kind of a two minutes. Okay, so it's, it's a, like the last slide. So. <laughs> Keep going, no problem. Yeah. <clears throat> so we, we've done a bit uh, using uh, computer science methods set down together, doing some hermeneutics, just discussing about what method has what kind of influence. On your results, uh, we have uh, some idea how we can help future users of this online Maya dictionary to, to show them which signs are probably uh, easy to confuse if you're not so deep into, into Maya script. And of course, we will kind of export this knowledge from this uh, project to others, uh, things where we've done uh, like 10 years experience in document analysis of Cuneiform script. So this will be interesting to do something uh, for, for the other data we have. And what's Bartosz presenting in parallel, sorry, this is the German title of the project. It's also about contextualization of Aegean uh, ceilings using uh, like 3D forensics. There we have some extra aspects, also looking at uh, tool marks, if they're using drills or uh, knives or whatever to, to cut these stones. So this brings me to the end. Like last year, we also had this workshop about our 3D software where we computed these images in the beginning. So this has been online now for a year and also we were 
uh, quite asked quite often because we're Linux persons. Is there something for archaeology? Uh, can you provide us a Windows? So this is a version. This is today like a premiere for a better version. I wouldn't. Uh, I'm not. We're not yet sure if everything works, but you can try it out. You find also some YouTube tutorials to get into profile line extraction. So this relates a bit to the previous talks. And in December, we will have also a German workshop on uh, building research in medieval time, also with GIS and, and 3D things going on. So, thank you very much.